here. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to talk to you sort of about my editing process with my mentor today. I really want to get a video up for you guys regularly, so this is what I'm going to jump into today. Um, please be sure to hit that like button if you enjoy this kind of content so that other people will be able to find it as well. So. I got back my latest submission from my mentor slash editor on Monday, late Monday. Um, it was actually right after I filmed my last <laughs> video that it came in. So I thought I would just sort of show you without giving away too much of my story, what my edits look like when they come back and why it feels so overwhelming even though it's not really. So let me just flip you guys around here. This is Word, which I don't use typically. I use Scrivener, um, but she sends it back in a Word file. And as you can see, there is a lot of red and yellow comments. And like, look at all those changes <laughs> scrolling by on the side. As I said, she is a lot more invested and is giving me way more intense revisions than what I experienced the first time I did this program. So, as you can see, there is a lot for me to work on, a lot of comments, a lot of edits to accept or change. And this is just a two chapter submission. And it is only 16 pages. It's only 16 pages, which is actually really short. I'm supposed to submit 20 to 25 pages, but obviously I'm not gonna stop halfway through a chapter. So I just submit what I can based on that page count, staying within the chapters. So that's what my edits look like when they come back. She is really doing a great job at nitpicking, which can feel hurtful in some instances, but I know is making my book so much better and I really appreciate her suggestions and her edits. Um, so this is why I said in my last video, I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed with all the editing that I have to do because there's just so much to comb through here. And it's even more difficult for me being that it's not in the program that I use so I have to use this program that I don't like I'm gonna be honest I don't like Microsoft Word use this program I don't like go through all the edits and then I have to copy and paste every chapter back into Scrivener and uh, it's just it's a whole thing so <laughs> that's why I fell behind on doing the edits as they came in and yeah I'm gonna have a lot of work ahead of me when I finish I sent my next submission to her on the 22nd, so the day after I got this back, I just checked it over to make sure there was nothing like, you need to cut this whole chapter, that sort of thing, no comments like that. And then I sent her the next submission the next day, so I should have that back in just a couple days. And then I only have three more submissions to send, which is really exciting. Something else that I still need to do for this book is write the synopsis, which I'm not good at um, at all. I had to write a bit of one when I sent in my application for this program. You have to actually be chosen based on the quality of your work. So I had to send sort of like a, a loose query letter and then a sample submission. So I kind of have a bit of a synopsis. Why don't I pull it up actually and I'll read it for you guys and you can let me know what you think about it. Keep in mind this synopsis was written just a couple days or weeks after I finished writing this book for NaNoWriMo 2020. So I haven't even looked at this synopsis in seven months or so, eight months, and I honestly have no idea what it says. So let me find it. <laughs> so keep in mind, I've never written an actual query letter. I'm not good at summing up my own work at all. So this was the letter that I wrote to accompany my writing sample. 
To whom it may concern, thank you for taking the time to read from my work in progress with the temporary working title of Project Camp. The story follows Melody Burton and Piper Shepard, both 15-year-old girls in a dual POV look at their tumultuous lives spanning an entire decade. Throughout the story, Melody and Piper navigate common present-day issues for teenagers and young adults, including mental illness, relationship problems, sexual identity, and troubled home lives. But between their friend group and themselves, they also experience bigger issues like suicide, domestic abuse, psychiatric hospital stays, and homelessness. If the story sounds dark and unhappy, that's because it certainly is at times but it is also about the beautiful journey of two girls enjoying the experience of summer camp, finding their strength and resilience through their many trials, and making lifelong friendships that could never be replicated. We see both of their lives through to a happy ending. For one of them, finding that the love of their life was right there waiting the entire time, and for the other, discovering her true passion and turning her negative life experiences into an incredible future where she helps others daily. The story was loosely inspired by my experience at summer camp and includes many embellished versions of the real life history within my relationships. I've been waiting years to tell this story and the time is finally right. And then I went on to talk a little bit about myself and my experience. So actually reading that back, <laughs> reading that back, I'm actually more impressed with myself <laughs> than I was expecting. Um, I think it's a little wordy, it's a little maybe even too much detail at times, um, but I do really like what I said about the book. And the interesting thing is that it says that I wrote it on November 12th, which means I was only 12 days into NaNo when I wrote this, meaning I really had no idea other than if I was going to strictly stick to my outline what was going to end up happening so i think i must have known those 12 days in that i was going to stick to my outline 100 percent and that this was what the book was going to be um it's funny that i can't even really remember back that far uh that's part of the reason why i vlogged the whole experience so that i could remember how i was feeling and like how everything went um because i really have a terrible memory to be honest so yeah, I'm actually more impressed with that than I thought I would be. But yeah, I think it's definitely like kind of wordy and maybe not, it doesn't have enough like marketing in it, if that makes sense. Like I need to make it more marketable, include some like buzzwords and current trends and that sort of thing, as opposed to just laying it out like they experience this and this and this and this and this. But yeah, that's what my story is about. I would love to hear what all of your work in progress stories are about in the comments. If you have any advice for my synopsis here, I'd love to hear that too. As I said, I'm brand new to this and summing up things is not my forte. I'm a very, I'm an overwriter. I like a lot of adverbs and adjectives and often not the way people like commercial books to be especially in YA so that's something that I've really had to try and work on and something that my mentor has been working with me on is that I really need to like make it a little bit more snappy and like get to the point you know instead of uh instead of giving so much detail all the time but at the same time I'm terrible at world building so I underwrite my settings completely and I underwrite my characters um, in terms of like their appearance and their personality and stuff like that. But then all my dialogue and plot is totally overwritten with way more words than it needs. So it's kind of funny that I'm like, I can't, I can't even stick to one lane as to whether I'm an overwriter or underwriter. So I think that's all I have for you today. I sat down not knowing what I was going to talk about. So I'm glad I've ended up with 12 minutes of footage for you. Yeah, I would love your advice. I'd love to hear what your stories are about. I'd also love to hear if you have any ideas of how I can turn a synopsis like this which is 230 words into like an elevator pitch or even shorter like 
a Twitter pitch. That I think is gonna be the most difficult part for me. So those are all the things I would like your advice on and your help with. Um, if you have any to give, please leave it in the comments. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to see you guys on a weekly basis. My next video, I should have an update on my previous submission, I hope. And I don't know what else we'll talk about, but I guess you'll just have to come back and find out then. Please hit that subscribe button if you are enjoying my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.